Santa Boratory Studios. I did the, did the book Personal Monsters, right. Compendium of Monstrosities of Personality, and I'm also the author of Demon Bitch. And the illustrator of Demon Bitch. Did you hold that up? She blocks herself on Facebook because she's not stupid. So this like art is therapy, or how how would you describe it? You know, I think it's just because it's making fun of dysfunctional relationships and dysfunctional right. people, but mean dysfunctional people because nobody cares about them. So that's what I do, and um, you know the damage they do to people is really awful. So I prefer to go and just make it so you can laugh at the whole thing and somehow recover fast. So it's like a like so you're not sugarcoating it, but you're reinterpreting maybe negative characteristics in a different way, or how would you describe your, your way interpret it? I tell it how it is, and I mock it, and people feel a lot better. Yeah. Because they're told, like, get over it, or you got to forget about it, but, like, they're dealing with the emotional fallout. Right. And, like, this other person that did it to them, they're not having any consequences of it. So I totally believe in karma, so yeah. this is my karma for them. So how long have you been coming to WonderCon? Oh, I've been cabling for the last two years, and... But I've been an attendee for since I think 2009. Oh, almost 10 years then. Yeah, yeah, it's really kind of crazy. But I decided to take a plunge a few years back to do my own business, and here we go. And um, I came out with an infamous picture apparently on Facebook because everybody has to talk about it. Right. And it was that uterus picture. <laughs> yeah, you're nodding your head like, yeah, totally. But um, the thing is, is that apparently people really liked it, so they're just going for it. <laughs> So I draw raw and raw stuff, so there now, you go. Now, given the current, like, news headlines, if you were, say, as, a, as an artist to come, say, to Florida, to the high school, what would you suggest to relieve some of the tension with the shootings and so forth? Any, any ideas? What do you mean, like... like a, so we need someone, maybe to give us some sort of therapeutic way of handling this through artwork or something like that. You know, the thing is, is that, look, anybody, you're human. You're going to yeah. have negative thoughts, like, I'm angry, yeah. I want this person to die, you know, or have, have envy towards this person. But the thing is, is that you need to go and do it constructively. You yeah, can't just go right. and shoot up a bunch of people or hurt them or stab them unnecessarily because right. it's like, I mean, the only time I ever advocate probably that behavior is like, if you're being attacked physically. Yeah, yeah, like self, self defense. Like if a person has you and they're, yeah, self defense. But personally for me, I believe that if you are, if that person angers you that much, right. and if you're getting to the point where you feel like you're going to lose control or you're kind of going past the point of no return, you got to get it out and make it as mean yeah. and angry as possible. Now, you know, there are more constructive ways to do it. Like, yeah, certainly are. Yeah, I mean, certainly. when I do demon bitch, it's over people that I've run into, but I don't put their names on it. Right. Because that would be a form of <laughs> bullying, but I just draw it and I draw my feelings out. It's like, this is you, I hate you. And does not also expand the audience when you don't put the name to it as well? Yeah, I mean, it also gives that person a chance for redemption. Yeah. Like, they don't need to have, be demon bitch forever. They don't need to be the inner critic forever. They don't need to be, like, um, you know, the, um, the, the school shitter. They don't need to be that anymore. Right. You know, but the thing is, is that my work gives them a chance, like, hey, it's a mirror. You know, don't do that. So, so it's like, yeah. So if you're maybe taking the spot of maybe visiting the hospital or something and having <laughs> people pent up there to see your work? <laughs> you know, I, I think that personally, like, gallows, gallows humor is great. Like, the world, it's not the world is terrible, but yeah. the world has, can show you really fucked up shit. I mean, we've yeah. seen that with the Holocaust, we've seen that in war, oh, yeah. we've seen yeah. that in terrorism, we've seen all sorts of that murders, whatever. But the thing is, is that sometimes you just have to laugh, not because you're mocking the situation, yeah. but you're learning how to deal. Like, I have a friend whose mother died recently, yeah. and we would kind of joke about, like, certain scenarios would be funny to us, but it wasn't like we were not mocking her mother oh, dying. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course not. But we just started laughing because it released the tension. Like, just... I believe in gallows humor because sometimes yeah. some things are just so screwed up you just start chuckling because you just like really yeah you know? so you start laughing hysterically you know you might crumble inside if you don't yeah you know I mean like the thing is like my dad lived during the Korean War he yeah. has gallows humor and he was a kid when he saw a lot of weird shit yeah. Like, oh, yeah and horrible shit and it, it was really terrible I mean he was in Seoul so it's like yeah. his form of gallows humor probably kept him really freaking sane but, yeah. you know, I've had some crap in my life. I mean, I'm not going to get into it, but... Everybody Gallo has. Yeah. Gallo Everybody. Humor keeps you sane. You have yeah. to laugh at it. Because it doesn't negate it. It doesn't make it like it's not serious. But it takes away that fight. 
So you're not whitewashing it though? Yes, yeah. it's not whitewashing at all. No, not at all. I, I don't believe in spiritual bypassing, that's what they call it in other circles. Right. I don't believe in like tamping down your anger. I mean, you can walk away from your anger and definitely can choose to do that, but the only certain situations is not good with every anger point. That's true. You're legit if you're angry, you're legitimately mad about something. Yeah, you give one of those uh, sponge bricks and throw it at the TV screen that doesn't break the TV screen or something. Yeah, or like you just draw it and you're like, I hate you and you're stabbing the page. And yeah. Or you just write something really messed up and it's funny, but it's just awful because it's like the thing is awful. Yeah, because I remember when I had suicidal thoughts, I, I took a super soaker and shot myself. So, you know what? I survived. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you just have to kind of be like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And sometimes your brain has to go there. Yeah. I mean, again, if you're planning it, if you're doing anything, if you're like if you're feeling depressed and you're legitimately planning to kill yourself right. then you need help or you can't take care of yourself you can't shower or clean your house right but if you're just feeling kind of sad you have to kind of feel like you want to die you know just explore those feelings it doesn't mean that you go on a downward trial you're just like okay well all right i feel these things all right now how did you learn to take this approach what? how did you learn to take this approach experience uh -huh. like because i've been told by like a lot of people like either my peers or friends unfortunately yeah. or my parents or i i think a lot of people in society are taught well you shouldn't feel that way well i do too bad yeah. you know and so I'll, I'll do it but i'll do it to be funny but i won't do it as a way to be funny just to to mock people right it's more of I'm doing it to be funny because if I do it when I'm really upset and sad and scared and all these other heavy things, right. I'm going to want to go down and down with a spiral. This is just to laugh at. So the, the art came first and then the, the approach to the art? You were already drawing then you decided to take this approach? I think it kind of, yeah, it kind of came at the same time. Okay. Maybe the art before the other, like, I was just like, when I did Personal Monsters here, I was just really, really, really pissed off. Yeah. I was really, really, really friggin' angry. I was just... I was really mad, and I didn't know what to do about it. And so I just said, you know what, fuck y'all, and I just did it. Yeah, I remember, if you had, I think I saw you at the hive you had. This is the hive or the bee honeycomb or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the exact name of it. Yeah, yeah. It was like the hive. Yeah. The hive gallery and studio. Yeah. I'm a resident artist there, so. No, yeah. that's good. Yeah, so it, it's like being being able to participate in every show if I choose to. Yeah. I can just draw and do the craziest thing. So, yeah. Feel free to read a book. Oh, she can tell you all about it. Sorry? She can tell you all about it. She's the artist and writer. Yeah. Yeah. They're just conducting a bit of an interview right now. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Just go ahead and pick it up. It's fine. But yeah, it's uh. But yeah, so it's just like you just yeah. you have to be real about it. You have to be real with yourself. It's not pretty. It's not great. Right. It just is what it is. What if someone says, "Well, uh, Christy, but if people have you're hurting people's feelings by being so raw. Why don't you?" Tone it down so you don't hurt people's feelings. We're living in sensitive times and so forth. They don't care about my feelings. Why should I care about their feelings? I don't know. And you know, honestly, people are pretty much more resilient. I think we live in an age where we're afraid to hurt everybody. Yeah. By just even existing, that we actually create an environment where we're actually more hurtful to each other than I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, there's empathy. Do not get me wrong. Empathy is great, and sure. we have a bigger awareness of empathy, but we are mistaking empathy with empathy. <laughs> Or put him in a place. Sorry, I don't know. 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 Yeah. I just don't agree with it. Like, let's say, hey, I like chocolate. Okay. And you're like, I, I really don't like chocolate. I, you're not an asshole for not liking chocolate. I mean, so now you're discriminating against chocolate. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, oh, you hate chocolate. You discriminate against chocolate. I'm like, no. I just don't like chocolate, okay? Yeah. That's it. And a lot of times I think people are just so heightened up and angry. They want to go into their own teams and everything. They don't really want to listen to each other. Right. I mean, especially in the current political environment, most of us actually <laughs> have a lot more in common than we'd like to admit. Yeah. And the thing is, like, if we actually talk calmly to each other, oh, yeah, we actually kind of do want the same thing. And sometimes, like, I've been told, like, let's say for healthcare, oh, do you want to go and, uh, you know, wait, or do you want to be insured? And I'm like, oh, I, or not be insured. I'm like, I don't like either of those choices. Can we work yeah. on something better? Right. It's like, we're either given an is or a choice of not saying, maybe we can still improve this. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. And I think it's a very 
workable solution, for more, example. But yeah, it's not always so black and white or either or. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The thing is, is that what has made us humans to modulate and evolve for right. thousands of years is we've been able to modulate and evolve our own personal solutions. Right, be flexible. Yeah, be flexible. and then right now we have such a um, group mentality, you know, everything. Oh, you know, I know. Like social media and all that, which, I mean, I don't say social media is bad. But I think it's like we're adjusting to that. So you, we're adjusting to handling an influx of our own personal um, personal um, opinion that it's not no longer a group anymore, but we're trying to figure out how to compartmentalize it so it's not chaos. So what do you think about people saying that the like, uh, younger generation that grows up on social media forgets the how to face the face because they're so used to looking at the computer rather than the real human face, that sort of thing? You know, I mean, we're going to just have to adjust. Yeah. I mean, it's like the telephone. I'm pretty sure we thought about that. Oh, there's going to be a voice on the phone. Right. We're not going to interact. We still interact. Yeah? Oh, yeah, very it much so. It will always change. Human etiquette will change over time to adapt. We just have the internet as an influx of the past 30 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not that long of a time. So think about it in the next 100 years, like a car. I'm sure people were thinking they were going to have horses forever. Right, Now we have right, a car. Right. And then the car has its own set of problems. You know? Yeah, oh, like, yeah. Very much so. But it gets so. us faster into certain things. And, like, yeah, for a while it was a big polluter. Now we have, like, improvements to the car, so it's not a polluter. Yeah, Tesla or something. Yeah, or, like, catalytic converter even went back in the yeah, 50s. And that yeah. cleared up a lot of air in L.A. But, right. but it has happened to happen over a period of time. But it's like, I think people think, people make the mistake that things are going to stay stationary and they're not. No, they're not. Right? No, no. They're right. always constantly evolving. Now, your style of art looks a bit like analog rather than, say, like uh, uh, Illustrator. It looks like more like traditional drawing. Yeah, it is. I switch in between quote unquote analog and draw traditional media. Yeah. I ink, I draw like physically on a piece of paper, but right. I also draw on a tablet. How, how long did you, did you were doing that just experiment with the tablet, or did you took to it right away? I took to it right away. See, the thing is, is that I have a monitor tablet. Yeah. Now, before I had the stylus and tablet like this, I've heard about. Oh yeah, I've heard about. To get, get used to that. So like, you're doing like a, cin a Cintiq or a Wacom or which? I have a Cintiq. Yeah. Oh, no, I have a Wac Wacom. Sorry, Wacom and Cintiq are the same company, but yeah. the Cintiq is just a model. But I have a Wacom where I actually have a monitor tablet and they draw. Yeah. So what's the advantage of say of uh, this over? analog when you're using the... Well, if I use digital, um, it's good because I can make changes quite easily. Yeah. With uh, analog, it might be a little harder. Like, mm -hmm. why not my show through? This is not, you know. I mean, you can't go forward and backwards of the computer in a way you can when you have to erase something. Yeah. You might have it on layers or something like that. Yeah, or like I'll, you know, control Z, like go back, yeah, go back, yeah, or right, redo. Right. So then I'll find myself doing that as I'm drawing. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about your work or anything? Uh, my work, you know, I just draw. Like I just want to draw what I draw. Right. I just stick to it. I mean, I have an idea, like a, like an idea where I want to power and say go, but it just, it's not held to the point where it's ridiculously crazy. You know, any uh, any interest in animation? You know, I thought about it, but um, when I was younger, I wanted to do animation. Now I kind of want to do my own book, but I would not have a problem making my own animation. Like if my my book was animated, that'd be cool. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, I call it um, software that's really friendly user that's come up in the last few years. You could probably use on the computer or something. Vector and all sorts of animations it doesn't take up much space, like uh, uh, not RAM space that you could use. Yeah, yeah, I I thought about that, but I like focusing on where our artwork. But I mean, animators are good in their own right. Oh yeah, very much so. It's just I haven't had time. Well, I went to I went to National Cartoonist Society, you know. The one of them, the president uh, went to the uh, um, the TTN Expo last fall, October, November. So I see only about five styles in the animators, but I see a whole bunch of styles when I see cartoonists. Well, I think it's stationary, and I think with animation, it's like this, where animators tend to, when they're educated in that, they tend to take the simpler shape. It's easier to move. And there's like an industry look I see often. I tell well, that's an animator because I see that sort of similar look at times too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Christy. Yeah, thank you, Terry. You're welcome.